Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at S3 encryption. Encryption in transit is a way to protect data traveling to and from S3, using secure sockets layer, SSL or transport layer security, TLS. When you send data without encryption in transit, anyone who eavesdrops the communication can see the information. Both TLS and SSL are designed to provide communication security over a computer network. TLS is a newer cryptographic protocol, it's going to replace SSL. When you use HTTPS on your browser, you're using either SSL or TLS protocol to send and receive data. Using encryption in transit can effectively help prevent man-in-the-middle or similar attacks. You can configure the S3 bucket to only allow encrypted connections over HTTPS, by using the AWS Secure Transport condition in the bucket policy. Encryption at rest means data are encrypted while they're stored in S3. When you store data in S3 without encryption, anyone who has access to the S3 bucket can see the information. You can encrypt the data at rest using encryption keys. Only authorized people with decryption keys can see the information. Encryption at rest is required by certain compliance rules, such as PCI DSS for storing personal payment card information. You can enable encryption at rest for the whole bucket or encrypt individual objects separately. You can use server-side encryption options to let S3 encrypt and decrypt your data after being uploaded to S3. S3 offers three server-side encryption options. The first option is S3 Managed Keys or SSE S3. AWS manages the master keys and encryption keys for you. SSE S3 is the simplest option. The second option is encryption using AWS Key Management Service or SSE KMS. SSE KMS provides advanced features against unauthorized access. The third option is Customer Provided Keys or SSEC. You manage encryption keys, and AWS manages the encryption. Please note that server-side encryption encrypts only the object data, not object metadata. Alternatively, you can use client-side encryption, to encrypt data on the client side before uploading it to S3. You manage encryption keys, and the encryption and decryption process. Some compliance rules or regulations require companies in certain industries use client-side encryption. When you use server-side encryption with S3 managed keys, each object is encrypted with a unique encryption key. As an additional safeguard, it encrypts the encryption key with a master key, which is regularly rotated. S3 server-side encryption uses one of the strongest block ciphers, 256-bit advanced encryption standard or AES-256 to encrypt your data. AWS manages both master keys and encryption keys for you. SSE S3 is the default S3 server-side encryption option. When you use server-side encryption with AWS KMS, the customer master keys or CMKs are stored in AWS KMS. You can use the default AWS managed CMK, or specify a customer managed CMK. KMS allows you to centrally create CMKs, define the policies that control how CMKs can be used, and audit CMKs usage to prove that they are being used correctly. When you use SSE KMS encryption with an S3 bucket, the CMK must be in the same region as the bucket. Server-side encryption with customer-provided keys allows you to manage your own encryption keys, and S3 manages the encryption and decryption. When you upload an object, S3 uses the encryption key you provide, to apply AES-256 encryption to your data, and removes the encryption key from memory. When you retrieve an object, you must provide the same encryption key as part of your request. S3 first verifies that the encryption key you provided, and then decrypts the object before returning the data to you. Please keep in mind that server-side encryption only encrypts the object data, not the object metadata. As a security best practice, you should not keep sensitive information in the metadata. You can enforce S3 bucket to allow only encrypted connections over HTTPS using TLS, by adding the AWS Secure Transport condition in the S3 bucket policy. Here is an example of the bucket policy to enforce encryption in transit. We've set the effect to deny, and set the principle to anyone using the asterisk wildcard. We've set the action to all S3 operations, such as get object, list objects, and put object, using the asterisk wildcard. We want to include all resources including all objects and subresources in the bucket, using the bucket ARN slash asterisk. Finally, we've also set AWS secure transport condition to false, which means we're going to deny any requests not using secure transport. When you send the put object requests using S3 API, 
you can use XAMZ server-side encryption request header to set the server-side encryption algorithm. You can either set the header value to AES-256 for SSES-3, or AWS-KMS for SSE-KMS. Here is an example of put object request headers. It's uploading an object called my object to the example bucket, and request server-side encryption using SSE-S3 with AES-256. You can enforce server-side encryption of all objects in an S3 bucket, using S3 XAMZ server-side encryption condition in the bucket policy. In this example bucket policy, it's using the string not equals condition to check the put object request header, whether it includes S3 XAMZ server-side encryption equal to AES-256. It denies any put object request not using the required header to set server-side encryption. For server-side encryption using S3 managed key, set the condition S3 XAMZ server-side encryption to AES-256. For encryption using KMS, set the condition to AWS KMS. In this episode, we've learned S3 encryption options. Encryption in transit helps protect data traveling to and from S3 using SSL or TLS. Encryption at rest means data is encrypted while it's stored on S3. You can use server-side encryption or client-side encryption to protect data in S3 at rest. S3 offers server-side encryption using S3 managed keys or SSE S3, AWS Key Management Service or SSE KMS, and customer-provided keys or SSE C. Okay, that's all for S3 encryption. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudemy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudemy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning.